Hi, my name is Dr. Emma. I'm a dermatology doctor working in London and I'm also the co-founder of the House of Medics. So this is the third episode of our suturing series. In episode one, I talked you through all the instruments that you need to practice how to suture and they all come in the House of Medics practice suture kit. And then in episode two, I showed you how to do a simple interrupted suture. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to do a running suture. I usually do running sutures probably after I've done an excision, so I've excised the skin cancer or whatever. I've already put in deep sutures in the wound to bring the wound together, and then I'll do running sutures on top just to give that extra support, because really the deep sutures have already put the wound together. The running sutures on top are just for that extra support. So let's get started. I'm gonna open up a brand new suture. And the needle will be just in here. So I'm gonna grab that with my needle holder. And if you remember, I want the needle holder at 90 degrees to the needle, about two thirds of the way along. If you don't remember how to put the needle on the needle holder, that's in episode one. So go back and have a look. And then I'm ready to go. Okay, so the beginning of the running suture is actually exactly the same as how we start the interrupted sutures. So if you remember, using my forceps to help me, I put the needle in a few millimeters away from the edge of the wound, and then that advances through. Come out the other side, again using my forceps to help me. Advance the needle until it's all the way through. And then I'm gonna drop the needle and use my fingers to pull the suture. Again, you wanna aim for just a few centimeters on the other side. And then I'm gonna tie it with the instrument tie exactly the same way as we did for the simple interrupted suture. So wrap the suture around the needle holder twice, grab the short end of the suture and pull at the same time while crossing over my hands. And then I lock the suture and then wrap once in the other direction. And again, pull whilst crossing my hands over. And then once more, wrap in the other direction and pull whilst crossing my hands. So that's the beginning of the running suture, which like I said, is exactly the same as the interrupted suture. Of course, with the interrupted suture, at this point, you would then cut your suture because that's the suture completed and then you'd start another one. But what I'm gonna do at this point is, I'm only gonna cut the short end just like that, and leave the long end intact because I'm gonna use that to do the rest of the running suture. So I need to reposition my needle on the needle holder. Suture's long, so I just wanna make sure I don't put any knots in it. There we go. Lock my suture in place, my needle in place, sorry. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna put the, the needle just under the skin on the opposite side and come out. Again, put down my needle and pull the suture. It's much safer than pulling it with the needle in your hand. And then now I've got my suture just perfectly here on the other side of the wound. reposition my needle and now this is what we call the running bit because the suture is just going to run through the wound and bring it together so what I do is I use my left hand to hold the suture my needles in my right hand and I'm literally just going to go in that side you can put down the suture if you need to and use the forceps to help you But bearing in mind, usually I'd be doing this with a wound that's already been closed by deep sutures, so the wound would already be touching. Advance my needle. And I'm just gonna go again. 
The reason I pull the suture with my left hand is it provides just enough tension to bring the wound together and I can see where I want to go. Make sure you don't cross over your suture as you're pulling it because that will give you a knot. Another one. And we're just going to keep doing this until you've done the length of the wound. So I'll show you one more. So you would keep going until you've done the whole thing. And then in order to finish off, you of course have to tie a knot at the end, otherwise it would all unravel. And the way that you tie the knot is again, quite similar to what you do for the interrupted suture. So again, just positioning my needle on the needle holder. And I'm gonna go in just like I would for an interrupted suture, come out the other side advance the needle, again making sure that they don't cross over because I don't want to get any knots. And then what you do now is you leave a loop at the end. So instead of just having one suture sticking out, you're going to have a loop. I can put down my forceps now and I'm going to do an instrument tie the same way as I have done at the beginning of the running suture and like I do at the end of every interrupted suture, but I'm using the loop to pull through. So wrap my suture around twice, grab the loop. So I just got my suture locked in there. There you go, free that up and pull. And then again, wrap once in the other direction and pull. And one more time, wrap in the other direction and pull. And there you go. So it's actually exactly the same as the instrument tie that you already know how to do. And then it just means that at the end, I have three sutures to cut instead of just the two. So I'm going to cut like this. And there you go, running suture. So I've shown you how to do a running suture. If you're interested in learning how to suture, you can grab one of these House and Medic suture kits. The link is in the description box underneath. And stay tuned because we've got a lot more videos on how to suture coming up. <laughs>